Hello and welcome back to part three in this series where I talk about how I make our narrowboat vlogs. Well done if you've made it to part three. <laughs> I didn't think there'd be this many episodes but apparently it's quite a long process. Um, in this video we are going to be taking the rough edit that I've already done and adding on the voiceover and doing the fine edit and hopefully getting to the stage where we can export the finished vlog from Final Cut Pro and upload it to YouTube. The first thing I need to do is find my files. So I keep all of the vlogs that I'm currently working on in my current libraries file and we are currently on vlog number 270. So I'll open that up and I'm also going to open up this library called templates because um, I keep a lot of resources in there. And so at the top we've got the templates library and here we've got my current vlog 270. If I highlight that library 270 and scroll to the top I've got two projects within that library. I've got bloopers and the vlog itself. I'll open up the vlog and then the timeline gets populated down here with the current edit. And this is where we finished off on the last vlog uh, with the rough edit. Um, so basically we've got the intro and the outro fully edited and we've got the rest of the timeline is all the clips in chronological order and we've got basically half an hour of footage and it's probably going to get edited down to about 10 minutes of footage this one. In the last episode we also recorded the voiceover. Um, under here you can filter through your files, you can just look at videos and you can just look at audio clips and this is the voiceover that I recorded in the last part of this series. The first order of business for the day is to move from the towpath moorings. So that's ready to go. Now all our vlogs start with uh, a card which shows the location, the waterway we were on and the date it was filmed. And instead of having to do that each time I do a new vlog, I go into my templates in my version 2 templates. And here we've got just a template of that card. I can highlight the text and the space holder and just command C and copy that and then use this arrow to flip back into the project for the vlog 270. Go to the position and the timeline using this marker where I want to insert that control V and it's there. Just zoom in. Obviously this isn't where we were in this vlog, we were in Thorn so I can highlight that bit of text and then come across to this menu here and write Thorn. I always use the same font in all my videos. I use DIN Alternate um, in every text that I use. So it just keeps a bit of, and it's also the same text um, font that's on my thumbnails as well. The waterway is the, well, it's the Stoneforth and Keedby Canal, but it's part of the Sheffield and South Yorkshire navigation. And it was filmed on the 8th, of February. And then the next thing I need to do is find the music and this is another part that I really hate. <laughs> um, all of our music generally now comes from the YouTube creators library and I've got a list of about 100 tracks that I use that I just kind of rotate through. Some work better than others, some people like some, some people like others. I quite often get comments on the music. It's, it's really hard choosing the right music. <laughs> This is one of my favourite ones. That's not right for this vlog. Let's try that one. So once I've chosen the track I can go and import it. So I select the name of the song and then import. And then if I go to the smart locations to the audio files, it's there. So I can just drag that down onto the timeline. Now I find that the natural level of the audio track, of the music track is a bit loud and it's just not comfortable for the audience, as I was told <laughs> when I started making vlogs. Um, so if I play it now, 
I'll just mute it while it plays. As you can see, the audio levels are coming up to like the zero mark, and I find it's more comfortable if they're around the minus 12. So I can just highlight the music file and drop the volume to about minus seven on here. And then when I play it again, it's much quieter. It's around, around the minus 12. Um, and then if I turn it on again, I need to find out how long I want to play it for the introduction. And when I get to this spot where I want to cut it, I just press pause. And if I zoom in here, you can also see on the file itself, you can physically see where I want to cut it. So then what I have to do is click on A, which is my arrow tool, and then I can drag the file out to meet the line and then you'll see that the picture actually starts if I play it again right on the kind of beat on the music where I want it to and then this is going to be the first clip of the vlog our neighbor on his bike this is quite a long clip um, but I'm only going to use a very small part of it, so I'll just play through the rest of the clip to see if there's a bit I prefer to use. Yeah, I think I want to use the bit where Michael's pulling off, so I can actually just delete all of the bits that go beforehand. There's actually a bit of voiceover that needs to go into this bit, so I'm going to drag the whole of the voiceover file down. And I just need to do some prep on that. So I'm going to mute the music. Um, and then just get to the first part of usable voiceover. And if you look at the audio, audio bars as it plays. The first order of business for the day is to move from the Topaz mooring. You'll see it's only coming through the left speaker at the moment. And that's because when I recorded the voiceover, I only used the left hand track on the voice recorder. When people watch the vlog, I actually want it to be coming through both of the speakers so um, I just need to do some adjustments to make that happen. I'm also going to add the limiter on like I did for the intro and outro. Uh, the limiter just takes out the background noise a little bit, uh, stops the voice peaking if I haven't got the setting right on the audio recorder and just makes it a bit cleaner. So I'm going to add the limiter and then the first thing I'm going to do is increase the gain the release and change the output level and then the next thing I'm going to do is change the pan from non to dialogue and then move it all the way over to the right and then now when I play the clip it should play through both speakers. The order of business for the day is to move from the topaz moorings onto the finger moorings so that's all good. The next thing I'm going to do is just add on the noise removal um, just to take out any background hamming um, because when I record, I'm not in a studio, I'm just on a narrow boat, so there's lots of kind of ambient noise. So adding the noise removal just takes that down a little bit. And then when I play the clip, if you look at the audio bars, from the topaz moorings onto the finger moorings, so we can top up all. Um, you'll see that they're hitting about minus 12, which is the same level as where I've set the music, but I prefer the audio to be slightly out louder than the music. Um, so I'm going to increase the volume here to about three. And then if I play it again, I'll see what that's done. From the topaz moorings onto the finger moorings so we can top up our water. I think I'm going to take it to five. To so move from the topaz moorings onto the finger moorings. So now the audio bars are hitting about minus six. I think that's a much better level for the voiceover. So that's been applied to the whole of the voiceover file. So no matter where I cut it, those adjustments will stay. Um, which is why it's important to do the adjustments before you start cutting the clip up. Okay, so if we go back to our opening shots. And I think I want the voiceover to come in here. So I'm going to drag the file so that it, it starts at the playhead. And these bars along the file show kind of the peaks in the level um, so I, I start talking probably on this one here so if I move it along 
it means I should start speaking a kind of on the beat of the music, which is where I want the voiceover to come in. So just play that. The first order of business for the day is to move from the topaz moorings onto the finger moorings so we can top up our water tank. Okay, that's perfect. So I'm going to cut the voiceover file just there and then move it out of the way and just play it again. The first order of business for the day is to move from the topaz moorings onto the finger moorings so we can top up our water tank. Our water tank. And I'm going to end that clip right there so I can either cut it or drag the clip back down. Even though the voiceover is louder than the music, the music's quite distracting to have underneath the voiceover. So what I do is I manually take the levels down while I'm speaking. So I move the playhead to the point where I start speaking and I can put one of these little markers, I don't know what they're officially called, Michael will probably tell me, um, at the point where I want to drop the level. And at that marker, at the, the level's minus seven for the music, I move it along a fraction and then if I drop it to about minus 22. Different key frames. Key frames. <laughs> um, and then I can put another keyframe near where I finish speaking and one a bit further along once I've finished speaking. So that one should be at 22 because I'm speaking and then that will take the music back up to the normal level. Um, I usually have the music drop quite sharply so the keyframes are very close together and then when I stop speaking I have it more gradual so the music kind of fades back in. So if we play that. The first order of business for the day is to move from the topaz moorings onto the finger moorings so we can top up our water tank. So we can top up our water tank. I think I actually want the clip to stop there. And you end up playing the same bit again and again and again and again until you get it right. The first order of business for the day is to move from the topaz moorings onto the finger moorings so we can top up our water tank. The building in front of us here houses the L. Okay, so I don't need that voiceover yet. So I just move it out of the way. I mute it um, so it doesn't distract me and I move it out of the way uh, just down here till I need it again. Okay. So this is quite unusual. I don't usually have footage before our intro, but I do on this one. So a couple of tricks I'm going to do to make the transition from the visual vlog to the intro a bit more smooth, um, a bit more comfortable, less jarring, is I'm going to actually put a file, like a kind of blank file underneath this clip and move this clip on top. So visually when it's plays, it'll look this, the same, but because this kind of dummy clip is here, it means I can start the intro beforehand. So if I leave it there and just have it start when that clip finishes, it will sound quite abrupt. So. Welcome to one month later. So even with the music underneath, it's quite abrupt. But what I can do is I can just extend the clip out a bit the intro is now kind of underneath that image of the boat. Welcome to one month later. <laughs> so because Michael starts speaking before the clip of the boat finishes, it just makes it a kind of less abrupt transition. So one more thing I need to do before this front is finished is I like to have an image underneath the title card. So what I do to do that is I just extend the the initial clip back underneath the title. So I've just copied it there. I've put the copy above the actual file and then if I drag it backwards it means that it'll just look like a continuing clip. This title card that I use is called Pull Focus and it's just like a preset title and what it does is it blurs the background while the title's over the top so I just I kind of like that as the introduction so I'll play all the way now until the vlog starts and we can see what we've got so far.
the first order of business for the day is to move from the topaz moorings onto the finger moorings so we can top up our water tank. Welcome to one month later. <laughs> okay, so one thing I noticed is I've got the different sound levels on the um, footage. I kind of like having the ambient noise underneath the music depending on the quality if it's a bit windy i have to take it right down but on this clip for some reason i've got it at zero and on for this clip i've got it at 12 so if i just take that down to zero as well it won't look so stark i've already edited the introduction there's just one cut in that okay so when the introduction starts welcome to one i also need to take the music down so Add in a keyframe just after we start speaking and then I'll take the music all the way down to zero here. Welcome to one month later. <laughs> We've been here for a month. So yeah, we just did 23 seconds of a uh, video and it's taken all that time. So now we just need to carry on and edit the rest of the vlog. I don't want music underneath the voiceover so I can just delete that part of the file and then I'll drag the voiceover file to the next place where I'm going to need it. So we talk for about three and a half minutes on the introduction and then the vlog itself starts so I need to bring the music back in. So I've pulled the file down again so it's like a duplicate of the music and I'll take the level down to minus seven. I either fade it in or I have it starting as the footage starts depending on the track so I'll just listen to this one and make the decision. Should we um, take the chimney down? I think it'll be fine. Uh, so that was quite a like a strong first beat so yeah. I think I'm going to start it uh, with the first image. So the first clip we've got is a time-lapse clip and it's us reversing off the finger moorings and there's a bit of voiceover for this. The building in front of us here houses the l sand toilets and showers, and just behind the building as the bins. Okay, so... Mute the bit that I don't want. Um, that bit of audio is talking about this clip, so I'll need to go under his beginning bit. Um, so... Probably about there, so I've paused the payhead where I want the voiceover to come in, drag the voiceover along, zoom in. The building in front of us here houses the L sound toilets and showers. And and because I messed up this little bit, I just need to cut the voice over there and there. Remove the bit where I said... The building as the bins. And just behind the building as the bin. Just remove that bit and put in the second one. Showers. And just... Down toilets and showers. And just behind... And I just need to clean that up so there's not such a jump. and just behind the building are the bits and showers and just behind the building so that's kind of a quite quite a smooth jump you can't really tell that i cut a bit out of the middle so play that the building in front of us here houses the l sound toilets and showers and just behind the building are the bins okay so i think at that point i'm going to use the rear camera and see what's there the building in front of us here houses the L sound toilets and showers, and just behind the building are the bins. So I'm going to make a cut here because the rear view doesn't actually get interested until Michael starts reversing. So about there. Showers, and just behind the building are the bins. So that was quite nice. 
but I just want to check the front view to see if I'm missing something that was... See, that was quite nice as well. So here I have to make the choice of whether I use the rear view or the front view. I think I'm going to use the front view. Mm. Other bins. Okay, so that's quite nice. We've got the us getting ready yeah. to leave at the front, followed by Michael all about to reverse, following followed by us leaving the the finger moorings, which I think is quite a nice shot. Um, just need to do a little bit of clean up on the voiceover. So I don't actually start speaking to here. And if you listen to it, you can hear me breathing in. So I just need to cut that down. And then at the end as well. The bins. I actually stop speaking then so I can get rid of whatever noise that is. And then I need to drop the levels on the music. It's just a case of adding in the keyframes, dropping the music underneath the voiceover and then increasing it again at the end. The building in front of us here houses the l -Sand toilets and showers and just behind the building are the bins. So now I just have to do the same for the rest of the vlog and basically do the fine edit, put the voiceover in all of the correct places and trim all of the clips so that they fit in with the music and so that they are not too long so we can just tell the story of what happened on this day. Okay, so it's about half an hour later and I'm still editing away and I've actually come to the end of the music track. Most of the music tracks I use are about two and a half minutes long and so when I come to the end of a track I have three choices. I can either change the music and pick a completely different track or I can try and continue with the same track and there's a couple of ways I can do that. I can either put a cut underneath a voiceover so it's less noticeable or I can find a place in the music where I can kind of loop it um, and hope nobody notices. And nobody has ever commented, ever, that they've noticed, so um, that seems to work. Um, I will change the music at some point in this vlog, um, but I tend to change it after about five or ten minutes, so I'll loop it once or twice and then change it. Um, so this track has a point here where I could loop it. So there. If I can find somewhere near the beginning of the track that makes sense, I can try and do a loop. I think there might work. So let's have a look. I'll just drop the audio track down to some uh, minus seven. That's not too bad. Yep, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to loop it there um, and hope nobody notices. And now I can continue editing the rest of the vlog. So it's about another maybe 45 minutes to an hour later and I've looped the music twice now. So I think that's enough of that track. So I'm going to pull in a different track. I usually try and use um, in the same blog. I, if I use two more than one track, I try and use it from the same artist. So it has the same kind of feel to it. And this time, I think I'm just going to fade the music out. So this is where we are.
So that's about where I'm going to pull in the new track. So I just need to go and get one. And my media is on my desktop and it's in my current YouTube music folder. The track we're currently using is by Chris Hagen. So I think I'm going to use this one. Um, it's another old favourite, although it's not the easiest one to edit to. So import that one. And if I go to Smart Locations Audio Files, um, here it is. It's Apollo Train. And drag that down so that it actually starts playing at the playhead. Drop the volume to minus seven. And let's see that. And then switch from that clip to some time lapse. Okay, very happy with that. So now I can carry on editing um, with the new track. Okay, so that's the edit pretty much done. Um, I've watched it all the way through, pretty happy with it. I like to get Michael to watch it as well because he is better at spotting typos. So if there is ever a vlog with a typo in it, it means Michael hasn't checked it. <laughs> um, I just have a couple more things to do. So where I have voiceover with cuts in it because I can't say a sentence, um, example here, if I play it, there's a private marina on the right after the bridge and it's fenced off so I assume there's no access on that side. What I don't realise... You haven't got it here but sometimes there's like little clips as I go from one clip to the next you can hear like a little click. So what I can do is I can apply um, like a fade to the beginning and end of each clip so what I'm going to do is using the shift key, I'm going to select all of the voiceover. And so when it's selected, it's surrounded by yellow. If I go all the way to the end, there we go, all the voiceovers now selected. And I can actually do it with the music as well, because it will smooth out the joins between the music clips. And then if I go to modify, adjust volume and apply fades, it will just smooth out the sound. And if I zoom right in, you can see it's added this fade, which just smooths out the audio uh, voiceover, and you just won't get any clicks between them. Uh, the next thing I have to do is add in the end screens. So at the end of our vlog, we always have some cards, and I've got them saved in my templates. So I just copy all of the cards over and paste them at the end of the vlog and then get one of their music tracks and just drag that down underneath. Adjust the volume to minus seven as normal. Uh, fade the music up so that it transits from the outro to the end cards. and just trim them to however long I want them. And then I always put in um, a thank you to our Patreons at the end. And this is everyone who's ever supported us on Patreon, whether it was for a month or for three years. So they just run at the end. And then I fade the music out and then I need to add in the bloopers. I just need to go and quickly edit those. With the bloopers I put half a second pause, just like a black screen between each clip just to separate them out. And I watch them again to check to see if they're funny and trim them down. When I've got a blooper that is just from the voiceover I just put a little 
microphone up there. Goodnell Swing Bridge is another one that has to be operated in conjunction with the railway crossing. <laughs> okay, so there's my bloopers, so I can then just copy those onto the end of the vlog. And then I have an end screen, which I generate each time, just in Photoshop. I have a template. And the end screen is just where YouTube let you put up some links at the end of your video. And it's always 20 seconds long, so there we go. And I'll fade the music out after 20 seconds. And then I'll just go and get a screenshot of the boat or something. Okay, that one will do. So I'll just take a screenshot of that. And then I can open up Photoshop, open up my end screen template, open up the screenshot, copy the screenshot from today's vlog onto the template, resize it, and then save that as either a PNG or a JPEG. And then I can import that into the vlog. And then drag that down and then that will be the end screen at the end of the vlog and now a vlog's finished and it's ready to export from Final Cut Pro so I just click file share master file default and then I'll save it as 270 I'll just save it to the desktop um, it'll save as an MOV file and if I go and look at the background tasks I'll give me some idea of how long that's going to take. A long time. A few moments later. So that's now exported from Final Cut Pro. And it's an MOV file, as I mentioned. It exports as quite a big file. So I'm going to run it through Handbrake, which is something I do on every vlog. And that will compress the file size and it will convert it to an MP4. Um, so I open up Handbrake, find the vlog I've just exported, which is 270 MOV. I've got all these settings preset. This is how it's set up. <laughs> and it always exports um, with this much compression. And if I click Start, it will work out how long it takes. And it's usually about uh, 10 to 20 minutes. Uh, 11 minutes, 25. So I just need to wait while that happens. And um, while the vlog is being run through Handbrake, I open up Photoshop and can make the thumbnail. I save it as a Photoshop file as well as a PNG so that I can make any changes if I want to. And now we're finally ready to upload to YouTube. Uh, so YouTube have this upload tool to, that is really simple to use. Um, I simply drag the mp4 file across and that starts to upload and then I have to pick a title for the vlog um, Um, my description is already pre-populated. I've got a template that I save. Um, but I just add in a bit about today's vlog. I can then add in my thumbnail that I've just created. I add it to my playlists. So this one is the Sheffield and South Yorkshire Navigation and the vlogs. So just two playlists. It's not made for kids and then I can add in any specific tags that I want to so the date I recorded it I'll put the location as Thorn and now I just have to wait for it to process once I've done that I can add in the end cards and then I can make the video go live so I hope this was interesting. It turned out much longer than um, I thought it would. 
I know this video isn't for everyone, but hey, I've got a little bit of time on my hands, so I thought it would be a fun thing to do. Um, we're going to make another one of these, which is just going to be a QA and a because we've had lots and lots and lots of questions about our editing process and our vlogging process. So that'll be the next video. I'm going to drag Michael into that one as well. Um, and then that'll end this series. So yeah, hope you found it useful. The next vlog will be a cruising vlog and then we'll release the Q&A. Thanks very much for watching.